Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, gals and gentle bods. Welcome back to the shed. Only today, we're not in the shed, we're back down in the big workshop. And there's a very good reason for that. This is the start of a new project. Uh, I'll explain a bit more in a few minutes. But first of all, let me introduce you to Morty. This is Project Morty. The project is to turn this 55-year-old shopping trolley into a competitive hill climb car. Morty is a 1967 Austin A40 Farina. I bought her back in April 22 with the intention to use her for speed hill climbing. On paper she had a reasonable spec with disc brake conversion on the front, lowered suspension with uprated springs on the front and adjustable dampers on the rear. A reasonable spec sheet for the engine, more on that shortly, and a nice set of Revolution 4 spoke alloy wheels. She was restored and built for sprint racing in 2011, so I'm told, although I think the term restored might be overstating the case somewhat. I have competed with Morty this season, but not without problems. It turned out the engine was put together by an angry chimp with a lump hammer and an angry grinder. It had a major dislike for oil, dumping 2 litres in 18 miles the week before the first event, so a replacement motor was found at very short notice in the form of a stock Morris Minor 1100 lump giving around 40 horsepower. The original engine, which we will call blue, was for a stock bore with lightened and balanced bottom end, lightened flywheel, ported big valve head with the block pocketed to allow for the big valves, a Kent Megadyne 256 camshaft, and breathing through a 40 DCOE Weber with 28mm chokes. A long centre branch exhaust manifold into a stainless straight through twin silencer exhaust system completed the setup. This lot should have been good for around 60-65 brake horsepower. The bodywork is in fair condition, but does have some issues. There's quite a lot of rust bubbling around the top of the rear wings and around the front valance and rear tailgate and boot lid. Plus there's a fair bit of pudding in the rear arches and back ends of the sills. Over the winter she will be receiving a full powertrain rebuild. Engine, gearbox and back axle. I've been busy collecting the parts required. For the engine, these include plus 60 thou flat top pistons, a used but good set of con rods, as those in the blue engine were lightened with the angry grinder, a full set of bearings including the cam bearings, new oil pump and a belt drive to replace the original timing chain setup. I've managed to acquire another rib cased gearbox and a straight cut close ratio gear set and full bearing set for it. The rear axle will be receiving a limited slip diff and Peter May engineering heavy duty half shafts. Ok then, that's a bit of background for Project Morty, let's get on with some work. So the first parts to come off are the brake pipes. So a 716 spanner and under the unions, as usual a couple of the unions jammed in the pipe, so I've cut the cable ties off the pipes to the axle and undo the other end of the pipes and then I could unscrew the pipe from, complete with the union from the wheel cylinders. I didn't want to cut the pipes because I wanted to use them as patterns for new pipes when I rebuild it all. The next parts to come off are the handbrake linkages. So simple pull rods off the compensator to each drum. And they're held on with clevis pins with R clips on the outsides. And the compensator ends are split pins through the clevis pins. So the next piece to come off is the compensator itself. The nut one side I couldn't get a spanner on, so I undid the other side and then with a knocking stick give it a tappy tap tap and we can remove the compensator from the axle. Tappy tap tap, there we go. And then just separate that off, take those rods away. I take the brake drums off and this one had got a leak in hub seal, so there was brake, uh, not brake fluid, there was axle oil in the drum, so the shoes are contaminated. So I've got new shoes, wheel cylinders and adjusters to go on when I rebuild it. But I'm keeping the shoes and springs together as they came off, 
so that I can see the right way to put them back on when I reassemble it. Next is a simple screw that holds the half shaft in, pries it away, catch the oil that runs out, put that over to one side. Now this is where the angry chimp had been in again. The hub nut was chewed up, looks like it had been tightened up with a hammer and chisel. I didn't have a socket that would fit it, so I've had to resort to the same technique to remove it. I've got new nuts for both sides. It's worth bearing in mind that the passenger side, the left hand side, is a left hand thread. So the right hand side is a normal right hand thread, the left hand side is a left hand thread. Don't get caught out if you're doing this job. Now if I pop the wheel cylinder out, which is held in with a simple spring clip, a bit of a fiddle, but we get it there in the end, simple spring clip, there's the wheel cylinder. As I say, I've got new wheel cylinders to go on, so that's scrap anyway. Take the handbrake levers out, and then ideally I would have used a puller, but I didn't have one to hand, so just tapping it out gently with a hammer, tappy tap tap, and off comes the hub. That's it, that's the hub out of the way, and now I can remove the back plate, which is four 5-16th UNF nuts and bolts. So unscrew those four, quick tap, and off with that piece. And now to the diff. So unscrew all the nuts that hold the diff in place, and then again tappy tap tap, and out it comes. Standard open differential, that allows both rear wheels to turn at different speeds when you're cornering but if one wheel loses traction it will spin this is the unit that's replacing it this is a torque sensing or ATB differential unit some complex gears inside that won't allow that to happen so that will be going in uh, on the rebuild I've got to clean all the parts up and then we can start with the rebuild thanks for watching I'll see you next time